you think. I'm not greedy at all. I'm fine with sharing my candy. But do you know what happened to the little tailor? Well, I'll tell you. The valiant little tailor. In a land far, far away, there lived a little tailor. He loved eating sweets like honey and jam, and it would attract flies that came from all over the kingdom. The little tailor did not chase off these flies, so these annoying insects came to believe that they were free to do anything they wanted. One night, they got into the refrigerator and gobbled up all the little chocolate glazed cream puffs. Well, no one could take this much suffering. So the little tailor grabbed the towel that was on the table and swung it at the flies with all his might. And these flies got up and left in a jiffy. The angry little tailor put a chain around the fridge and locked it. And then he wrote a scary warning in the front of his T-shirt. I am a strong man in my prime. I'll fight seven at a time. Then he went to the bakery, and he bought himself some fresh chocolate glazed cream puffs, and he headed home in a great mood. The little tailor was walking down the road, nibbing at his pastry, then boom! He met a giant. The giant read what was written on the little tailor's t-shirt and looked surprised. What do you mean, you'll fight seven at a time? The giant got very curious, so he said to the little tailor, If you are so brave, let's have a contest to see who is mightier. If you win, then I promise to tell you a giant secret. But if I turn out to be stronger, then you'll be in giant trouble. The giant looked around and found a huge rock on the road. He picked it up and broke it right in two. The little tailor was so surprised that he dropped his last cream puff. You see how strong I am, said the giant. Now it's your turn. The little tailor knew exactly what to do. He picked up the cream puff. He dropped it for it as if it was a heavy rock and squeezed it so hard that the cream came out and it hit the giant in the nose. The giant was shocked. He'd never met a human before. He could squeeze cream from a rock single-handedly. He must really be the strongest man ever in the cream of the human crop. So now the giant had to tell the little tailor a very scary, gigantic secret. On a high mountain, there grows a 100,000-year-old tree. If you climb high up into this tree, you will find a deep hole in the trunk. And at the very bottom of this deep and dark hole stands a huge refrigerator. And this refrigerator is full of ice cream, cream puffs, chocolate cakes, and cookies. But there is someone who guards this treasure, a dog with eyes as huge as a bicycle wheels. And he is on the lookout for anyone who tries to come and eat those sweets. But don't be afraid of the dog, said the giant to the little tailor. Grab him and place him in my apron. And the dog will calm down right away. You can then bravely open the refrigerator and eat all the tasty sweets your heart desires. The little tailor was so happy that he would be able to eat sweets and not even pay for them. And so he went to climb in the tree. He found the hole and peeked inside. And it was just like the giant had said. There was a refrigerator and there was a dog with big eyes. Before the dog had a chance to do anything, he ended up on the apron. He sat there and watched through tears and the little tailor went through his tasty treasures. And the little tailor acted like there was no tomorrow. He got inside the refrigerator and all the dog could hear were crunching, munching noises. The little tailor gobbled up all the sweets. He didn't even leave a single crumb. Looking happy, he slammed the refrigerator door and went out the hole. But when he tried to get through, he realized his full belly was in the way. The little tailor had gotten so fat that he couldn't get out or go back in. He was stuck in the hole. So there he was, sticking out of the hole, and everyone laughed at him until he lost all that weight. That's what I'm telling you. It's not healthy to eat that many candies. Eating sweet things will make you out of shape.
Listen, I have to leave you now, my darling toy friends. I'll be back by lunchtime. While I'm out, please don't misbehave, be nice to each other, and don't open the doors for strangers. Then nothing very scary will happen to you, and you won't end up in bad situations. Like the seven young kids from a fairy tale. I'll tell you their scary story. The Wolf and the Seven Young Kids. Once upon a time, Big Bad Wolf was living next to the seven young kids. The kids listened to their mother, and the wolf listened to no one. That's why he grew to be an angry, ill-mannered brute. So then one day, the mother of the kitties went to a store to buy some milk. No, not milk. Well, anyway, she had to go to the store to buy something. Maybe it was cabbage. Before going to the store, Mother Goat told her seven young kids, stay inside and be quiet, and don't open the door for anyone, even if they say it's the police, or that it's the maintenance guy. You can open the door only if you hear the following song. Little kitties, listen to me, sweetie. Open the door and be speedy. No, no, that's wrong. Here's the right one. Listen, sweeties, little kitties, I don't ask anymore. Then you open the door. Mother is back with some milk in her sack. She went to get some cabbage. We need to sing the song about cabbage. Listen, sweeties, little kitties, I don't ask anymore. Then you open the door. Mother is back with cabbage in her sack. There, Big Bad Wolf listened at the door and heard this song. Big Bad Wolf was a real baddie. It's really not nice to listen at the door. So as soon as Mother Goat left, Big Bad Wolf ran up and started to pound the door and he sang. Listen, sweetest, little cuties. I don't ask any more than you open the door. Mother is back with cabbage in her sack. He pretended to be their mother, but his voice roared like a motor. So then the seven young kids spoke up and told Big Bad Wolf, Go away! You're not our mother! Our mother left to get some cabbage! And they didn't open the door. Big Bad Wolf really wanted to gobble up the seven young kids. And this is what he came up with. He went to the blacksmith and asked him to make his voice really high, as high as the voice of Mother Goat. So the blacksmith took out a huge sledgehammer and then he used that sledgehammer to make Big Bad Wolf a voice that was really high and whiny. So now Big Bad Wolf could bleat as well as a goat. So he ran up again to the house with the seven young kids and started singing. Listen, sweeties, little kitties, I don't ask anymore. Then you open the door. Mother is back with some milk. No, with cabbage in her sack. The silly seven young kids got so happy they started screaming, Mommy, Mommy came back! And then they opened the door. Only the seventh little kid, the smallest one of all, felt that something was not right and he hid in the oven. Big Bad Wolf ran into the house and gobbled up all the six little kids one by one and he didn't even have a problem swallowing them. And the entire time, he kept looking around and searching for the seventh little kid, but he couldn't see him anywhere. Then he heard someone sneezing in the oven. Ah, he screamed, that's where you hid from me. Just you wait a second. I will get you too. Big Bad Wolf's voice was very high and very scary, and he was shaking with rage, his teeth shattering away. But he still couldn't reach the little kid. That's when Big Bad Wolf decided to start huffing and puffing to break down the oven. He huffed and puffed and only got dirt to come out of the oven. He huffed and puffed again and the wind made noise in the chimney. Then Big Bad Wolf ran out of the house. He ran in and huffed and puffed hard. In fact, he huffed and puffed so hard that he got all red. Big Bad Wolf was huffing and puffing, but the oven felt nothing. It was kind of like an elephant bitten by a small mosquito. He couldn't huff and puff it away. The oven was made of bricks. 
than Big Bad Wolf thought. I'll get to the tiny kid through the chimney. And he started climbing up to the roof. It wasn't easy to climb up the roof with a full belly. He fell down twice. His knees were scraped, his fur covered with burrs. But he still crawled up there. Well, he got up there all right, but he couldn't get in. His belly full of the young kids got in his way. Then he got all the young kids out of his belly, put them down on the roof and said, don't make any noise and if you don't behave, I'll come back and eat you. And then he thought, I'll get to the littlest kid, eat him and come back up and re-gobble them all up again. Big Bad Wolf was crawling down the chimney, barely making it, and he got all dirty from soot. Then he heard someone down there trying to light a match. It was Mother Goat. She'd come back home and started to heat the oven to cook the cabbage. While Big Bad Wolf was going through the chimney, she had time to come back with the cabbage to sing the proper song to get her young kids down from the roof and to tell the littlest kid he shouldn't have gone into the oven. Then Mother Goat started the fire. It burnt the tail of Big Bad Wolf. And he started screaming, What are you doing to me? It hurts! He barely made it out of the chimney and ran into the forest to nurse his wounded tail. Mother Goat was surprised because she couldn't understand how Big Bad Wolf had ended up in her oven. Then the seven young kids told her the whole story. And that's the story of what happened to them Oops, I forgot all about the time. Now I'll be late, so if you want to eat cabbage again, don't open the door to dangerous strangers. Looks like I need more colored building blocks. What's this? Can you call this a tower? If you plan on doing something, do it so it will stand the test of time. Cause you never know what can happen. Like this story. Once upon a time, the fox and the rabbit. There were the fox and the rabbit. The fox had a pretty house, all icy and sparkly. The rabbit's house was made of bark. Of course, when spring came to the forest, the fox's house melted away immediately. Only a puddle was left. The fox, all wet, came to the rabbit's house and told him, Rabbit, would you be a deer and please let me stay in your home? And the rabbit was very kind. Of course, my dear fox, you're more than welcome. Please come in and feel at home. Just be careful and don't make my floor dirty. So the fox stayed at the rabbit's house and dried off. She looked very foxy with her tail all bushy. She looked in the mirror admiring herself. Then the gray rabbit started to get on her nerves. His ears were way too long, his eyes were too cross, and his tail was so tiny, it was laughable. So the fox decided to throw the rabbit out. Get out of here while you still can, or I will get angry, and I will get hungry, and I will eat you up. Go now and don't ever come near here or you'll regret it. The rabbit was walking down the road crying when he met the dog. Hey, cross-eyed, why you crying? Well, dog, you see, I had a house made of bark and the fox's house was all icy and sparkly. When the spring came, the fox's house melted away and I let her stay at my house and she threw me out. Don't you worry, long ears. I'm going to help you. Let's go, short tail. You and I will deal with that fox in no time. When they got there, the dog started barking, but the fox didn't get scared. The fox was lying there all calm and relaxed. Suddenly, she screamed out, Hey, you, how dare you come barking in here? I will jump, I will pounce, I will get you. Nothing will be left of you, just scraps of fur. The dog started shaking with fear with his tail between his legs and ready to run away. The fox looked out the window and said, don't be afraid, come back inside. This house is big enough for two. And you, cross-eyed, get out of here. How dare you spread nasty rumors about me, you tattletale. The rabbit was walking down the road crying and met the wolf. Hey, rabbit, I want to eat you. Wolf, dear, please don't eat me and I'll sing you a pretty song. And he sang, Hey, old woman, hey, old man, run as fast as you can, catch a gingerbread man. No, I don't think that's the right song. Oh, like this. 
And the rabbit tells him, I had a house made of bark, and the fox's house was all icy and sparkly. When the spring came, the fox's house melted away. I let her stay at my house, and she threw me out. Okay, I'll help you out, the wolf told him. I'll sort it out. Let's go get her. Just when the wolf was ready to kick the fox out, she saw him through the window and shouted to him. Look who came to live with us. Great. This house is big enough for three. Why did you have to drag this terrible rabbit with you? Kick him out of here. The rabbit was walking down the road, crying, and met the bear. Rabbit, why are you crying? Well, dear bear, you see, I had a house all ice and sparkling, and the fox's house was made of bark. Oh no, it was the other way around. Well, it doesn't matter. In the end, the fox threw me out of my house. Let's go, I'll show you. So they came to the rabbit's house, and it was full of all sorts of animals, just like a zoo. There was a mouse in the house and a frog who could croak. The house was full, it even had a bull and an elephant. All kinds of creatures, they barely all fit in there. And then the bear had an idea and started roaring. What a wonderful house this is. I want to live in here too. He tried with all his might to get inside like a bulldozer that can't be stopped. Then it got very noisy. The very small ones were squealing. The very big ones were roaring and the house was breaking. They all ran. And of course, they brought the house down, just like that. They almost crushed each other to pieces in there. That's what I'm telling you. If you're friends with all sorts of weirdos, then build yourself a house that's very big and very strong. Well, well, well. You're sitting inside. You don't even know that winter's here. So much snow. Maybe you guys don't even know anything about Father Frost. Okay, here's a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a woman who was very mean. Father Frost. And she had two daughters. One was her own, and the other was not her own. A stepdaughter. The woman was very, very sweet to her own daughter and gave her fruits and candies to eat, but her daughter was never happy with anything. The pretzels were not soft enough, the candy was not sweet enough, and her dolls were not pretty enough. The stepdaughter was the total opposite, always sweet and happy, and she was always doing all the work around the house, but still her stepmother never liked her. And then one day she took her, drove her into the forest, and left her there. The girl was standing by the pine tree all alone, shivering from the cold. Suddenly, she saw the old witch fly over her in her mortar and land next to her. Then Father Frost jumped out from behind the pine tree. Are you back to your old tricks again? But the old witch told him, You know I don't eat frozen girls. Look at her, she is turning into an icicle. And besides, I'm sick with a sore throat. You made everything so frosty that even the chicken legs of my heart were frozen to the ground. I tell it to turn to me, but it can't. Oh, okay, fly away and fast. Go! Tomorrow the weather will be warmer with sunny skies. He said it all funny like he was on TV. Well, you know when they say the weather forecast? Anyway, the old witch got back into her mortar and went flying home to her hut. Then Father Frost came over to the girl and asked her in a very strange manner. Are you feeling warm, my dear girl? I'm warm, thank you, Father Frost, she told him. Father Frost saw that the girl was polite and easygoing, so he decided to take her to live with him. He brought her to his ice palace and said, Beats my feather blanket, so feathers fly and there is snow on earth. If you clean the palace, the sun will appear in the sky. And if you finish all your chores, then I will award you. No, forward you. No, record you. I forgot what it was that he said. Phew, I got it, reward you. And the girl was doing everything so well that Father Frost couldn't be happier with her work. And he decided to give her a word. 
I mean a reward. So he brought her to a clearing in the forest where the 12 months were gathered around a fire. They all gave her presents. The spring month gave her a huge basket of flowers. The summer month gave her berries and mushrooms. The autumn month gave her a sack of potatoes and some other stuff they gather in the fall. Oh, that's right, leaves. And Father Frost, together with the winter month, gave her three white horses, a sleigh, a Christmas tree, and a whole wardrobe of pretty new clothes. The girl came back home, healthy and all so rich. When the stepmother saw everything, she started asking the girl, where did you get all this stuff? The stepdaughter was kind. She set the sack of potatoes down in the corner and then spilled the beans. So this Minnie packed up her daughter and then took her into the forest. She was sitting under the pine tree, whining and eating her pretzel. She made such a mess with the crumbs. Leave me alone! Then Father Frost jumped up from behind the pine tree and asked her, Are you feeling warm, my dear girl? You are silly and old. Don't you see that I'm cold? Get me my presents, quick. Father Frost sat on the snow, and then he asked her again, Are you feeling warm, my dear girl? The girl jumped to her feet angrily. What are you trying to do? Freeze me, get me what I earned. Father Frost got up from the snow and waved his staff around, turning her into a snow girl. So she had to stand there till spring, or maybe even summer. And all the while, the kind girl was celebrating Christmas and giving presents to everyone. Great, huh? So remember this, my dear friends. Only those children who are kind and not lazy can get real presents that are nice and useful, too. And if you decide to be really mean and lazy, too, you will never get any presents. Good children always share everything with others and do it the right way. I like to do my share of, oh, sharing. I know sharing is caring, but we're not talking about me here, so I'd better tell you a fairy tale. There was a farmer living in a village. The tops and the roots. And nearby was the forest with all sorts of creatures living in it, including the bear. One day, the bear saw the farmer ride his cart over to a field, and when he got there, he jumped out and started digging something up with a shovel. The bear wanted to find out what was going on, so he approached the farmer and he asked him, Hey, farmer, what are you doing here? Well, Bear, I need to plow the field, plant the seeds, harvest the crops, and then eat what I reap. The bear became very happy that there would be something to eat. Then he asked the farmer a favor. Hey, farmer, please be kind and give me some of the crops you harvest. The farmer scratched the back of his head and said, Fine, when my crop grow, I will give you some. Tell me what part of the plant you will take, Bear. The tops are the roots. Why would I want to eat a bunch of roots anyway? Ooh, they're so dirty. So the bear told the farmer, of course, I will take the tops. Fine, said the farmer. We have a deal. I will give you the top, but you have to earn your meal. So here's the plow. Let's go and work the fields. That's the last thing the bear expected, that he'd be asked to plow the field like a horse. But the bear had no choice. He worked and huffed and puffed with the farmer hurrying him from behind the plow. Come on, my little pony, run faster! Anyway, they plowed the fields, planted the seeds, and then boom, they got lots and lots of turnips. The bear picked all the turnips and took them to the farmer's house, where he threw them into a heap. The poor bear was so tired he could barely stand. Then the farmer came over and started to divide up the crop. He took all the turnips for himself and told the bear, these are my roots. He gave the bear all the green tops that were not tasty at all and said, all right, here are your tops. Bon appetit, bear. The bear tasted them and said, ew, this tastes horrible. These tops are not edible, farmer. Why did you give them to me? The farmer looked at the bear and pretended to be surprised. But you asked for the tops, didn't you? The bear looked back at the farmer, speechless. He just stood there with his jaw dropped. 
and you could hear his stomach making hungry noises. The poor bear, he was really hungry. So he walked up to the farmer and asked, can you spare me some turnips, please? Fine, said the farmer to the bear. I'll give you some turnips. But first, you have to plant 10 rose bushes, sort three big beds of beans, wash all the dirty dishes, clean the whole house, do all the laundry, and what else? Oh yeah, I will go to sleep and you will stand by my bed with this. Chase the flies away, and if they wake me up, I'll throw you out and you will not get any turnips. The poor bear sighed, put on an apron, and started doing all the chores around the house. And the farmer scolded him from time to time. What's wrong with you, you clumsy bear? I can't sleep with you stomping your feet. Can't you be quiet? Finally, the farmer went to sleep. He was probably dreaming of gobbling up all the turnips. And the bear was standing next to the bed, waving his paws to chase the flies away. But one fly that was very fat and very green landed right on the farmer's nose and started crawling up and down. The farmer wiggled his nose like he was about to sneeze, so the bear got really scared. Oh no, he will wake up now! He will wake up! So he raised the fly swatcher and hit the fly with all his might. The bear was trying to hit the fly, but he hit the farmer right on the nose. The farmer jumped up, holding his nose and screaming, My nose! That's when the bear completely lost it. He turned, ran outside, fell over the bags of turnips, grabbed the bags and ran off with them into the forest. And the farmer was left holding no bag, just his own nose. Let me tell you why. It's because people who are selfish and greedy can see no further than the end of their nose. Be nice and share. Why are you looking at me like that? Oh yes, I can see it in your eyes. You are judging me like a book by the coveralls. But even an ugly duckling can have a very beautiful soul. And now I will tell you a fairy tale about that. Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a girl who lived in the kingdom a far, far away. She really wanted to go to the ball at the palace. The problem was that she never had the time to have the time off because her evil stepmother made her do all the chores around the house. All work and no play makes us dull kids. And it's all because of these horrible housework. Cinderella did all the laundry. She washed all the pots and pans. And every day she cleaned the fireplace by taking out the ashes. By the way, that's what Cinderella means, little ashes. In the meantime, the king had decided to throw another ball at the palace. And not just any ball. He invited everyone. He said there would be an all-you-can-eat buffet of cookie, candies, and ice cream. And that there would be dancing all night long. Cinderella became very happy, but then she became very sad. That's because she only had one dress to wear, and it was very dirty. So she had no dress to wear to the fancy ball of the royal palace. And then suddenly, the good witch showed up and said, I'm your godmother and I will help you. I'm going to turn your old tattered house dress into a beautiful ball gown, the most fashionable one of the season. But there's one thing you must remember. When the great tower clock at the palace strikes midnight, you must leave out once because your beautiful ball gown will turn back into a house dress. Cinderella was so happy as she checked out her reflection in the frying pan. Then came the evil stepmother. Why do you think you're going all dressed up? We have a whole bunch of nuts in the house that need to be cracked, so get to work right now. That's when Cinderella grew really, really sad. To crack that many nuts, you can ruin and break all your teeth doing that. How can you smile at the ball if you have no teeth? Then the good witch showed up again and gave Cinderella something that looked like a wooden Pinocchio with a nose this long and a mouth that was this wide and the teeth of a hippopotamus. And
And who could this weird nut be? Asked Cinderella. He is not a weird nut. He is a nutcracker, replied the good witch. Look how well he can crack the nuts. Crack, crack. It's all done. Cinderella was able to crack all the nuts right away. And she liked the nutcracker so much that she decided to take him with her to the ball. Cinderella was walking down the road when suddenly she saw the king. Oh, your majesty, said Cinderella. Why are you so sad? The king sighed heavily and told her, How could I not be sad? I had a ball at the palace, but then the rats showed up and threw me out. Just then the nutcracker stood up and said in a very human voice, Don't you cry, your majesty. I will come to your rescue. He started to play his nose like an elephant playing a trombone. And he played such good music that the king started to dance along to it. As soon as the rats heard the sounds of the trombone, all their willpower simply disappeared. And the king took the broom and swept them out of the palace. Everyone was so happy that Cinderella gave the nutcracker a big kiss right on his long nose. Suddenly, sparkles began to appear everywhere, and the nutcracker started to transform into the prince. And when his transformation was over, he said, up until now, I was under a spell. And now, my dear Cinderella, I am so happy that I would like to offer you my hand, my heart, and also these pretty glass slippers. Just then, the tower clock at the palace began to strike midnight. Cinderella got scared that the prince would stop loving her when he saw her in her old house dress. But the prince didn't care about that at all because his love for Cinderella was real. That's what I keep telling you. You may judge someone by their coveralls at first, but you fall in love because of their great inner qualities. You know, my dear little toy friends, it's almost Christmas. Time to get presents and have lots of fun. But remember, firecrackers are not all they're cracked up to be. If you set them off the wrong way, that's a very bad thing can happen. Just listen to this tale. The Snow Maiden. There was an old man who lived with his old lady by the snowfield. Their kids moved to the city, and they took all of the grandchildren with them. They would visit their grandparents only in the summertime. And in the wintertime, the old man and the old lady missed their grandkids terribly. They would sit by the window all day long and sadly watch the neighbor's grandkids having fun next door. One day, the old man had an idea. He slapped his forehead and said, Listen, my dear wife, I have an idea. Why don't we make ourselves a granddaughter out of the snow? The old man's idea made the old lady very happy. They ran outside and started to make a granddaughter out of snow. They made a big snowball and got really tired. It's a good thing that the kids playing outside in the snow helped them out. They put arms and legs on the snowball, then placed the head on the top. The old man made the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Finally, the old lady put on the ears, and the snow girl turned out to be so adorable, just like a little doll. Suddenly, the snow blinked her eyes and came to life. The old man and the old lady became very happy, and they called the girl Snow Maiden. The Snow Maiden was growing very fast, and by the time spring rolled around, the girl was a little grown up. Well, she may have looked like a grown up, but she was really still a kid at heart. She was always being naughty like a little child. She broke the wall clock and ripped her best dress. The old man had to fix the clock and the old lady to mend the dress. The time was flying by, and soon spring had arrived, just like in a fairy tale. The grass is green, the sun is bright, spring is here, brought by birds in flight. But the snow maiden was very sad because the old man and the old lady were afraid to let her go outside. What if she melted? And after the spring came the summer. Everyone was swimming and sunbathing. 
but the snow maiden was still sitting by the window. The old man and the old lady were worried about her, and they wrote to their kids every day, asking them to visit with their grandkids, because the snow maiden was really sad all by herself. The sun was shining brighter and brighter every day. So the old couple told the snow maiden to stay away from the window. And when it got really hot inside, they decided it was best to start putting her in the refrigerator during the day. Now, what kind of life is that for a poor kid? To sit in the refrigerator all day long and not be able to get out. Finally, they received a telegram from the city. Vacation! We're coming to visit you! The old man and the old lady jumped up and down as if they were not old and told the snowman, you only have to suffer a little while longer. Just sit in the refrigerator until we get back. We'll go pick up the grandchildren at the train station and we'll get some ice cream along the way. And then they left. Evening came. The snow maiden decided to get out of the refrigerator so she could look out the window and see if they were coming back. The neighbor's kids were playing outside, dancing around the fire, and then they started jumping over the fire. The snow maiden really wanted to join the kids and play and jump with them. She forgot all the warnings and ran outside. Then she decided to surprise everyone. So she went back inside and got the fireworks. She ran over the fire and jumped over it. And then, well, guess what? Of course, the snow maiden turned into a little white cloud. The old man and the old lady came back from the train station with the grandkids and saw the sad little cloud hanging above their house. And then they heard the voice, children, don't play with fire. And please don't cry, grandparents. I'll be coming back to visit you every winter in the form of snow, so you will not feel lonely. So did you understand everything about the danger of playing with fire and fireworks? Well, then Merry Christmas. So, so, so. Where could all of the cartoons be hiding? Hmm. Let's start an investigation. Ah! One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look for cartoons to pick. I will press this microphone. Masha and the bear, let's go. That's how easy it is. 